All right, what's up, Rally Art Gang, Lancer Gang, Evil Gang, whoever's watching this video. As you guys can tell, I just hit 54,000 miles on my car, which is pretty close, close enough to me for 60,000. So what that means is we're gonna go ahead and change out our rear diff, our transfer case, and our SSD transmission. Um, there are a few little differences that separate the Rally Art from the Evo, so I'll cover that in today's video because there are some things that are different and I wasn't able to find it on a forum or in other YouTube videos. So for today's video, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to do this change because like I said, there are a few differences like there is no yaw control on the rally art, so you won't need to be using that type of fluid. So I'll discuss that further along in this video. So if that sounds like something you guys are interested in doing, save yourself some hundreds of dollars on maintenance fees. Um, go ahead, stay tuned. I'll show you the type of oil I'm gonna use, the type of tools that are gonna be required and we'll get this process started. But for those of you who are newer to the channel, keep in mind the last SST fluid, rear diff, and transfer case I did not do. I was in the middle of a move and I didn't have time to do that. So let me go ahead and tell you guys how much I actually spent. This is coming from the Mitsubishi dealership themselves, okay? So I bought the Diaqueen oil, which is pretty expensive, um, all by itself, and I took it to the dealership and they used the oil that I provided them, so that's one less expense. But for the labor itself, to do the SST fluid alone was $300, okay? So $300 immediately saved if you do this yourself. And I'll be going into the fluids on how much I spent for that. It'll be a little bit cheaper. As for the transfer case and the rear diff, I paid $172. That's for the oil and the labor. So $172 for the rear diff, transfer case, and $300 for the labor and the SST fluid change. So that right there, what, 400, almost $500 that you can immediately save off your bill. All right, so let's talk rear diff and transfer case. All right, so you're gonna need about one liter each. Okay, this is genuine Mitsubishi oil. And this is what I'm gonna be using on the car today. So one way to instantly save about $200 off of fluid is to use a different fluid other than Dye Queen SSTF. So keep in mind, this is the OEM that Mitsubishi suggests that you use. Which is fine and dandy, this is a great oil, this is what I'm running on the car currently. But there is a cheaper variant, which is basically the same thing. So if you even look at the back, it says manufactured by Castor Oil, okay? So what you can go ahead and do, is you can buy Castor Oil Transmax Dual, okay? I'll link this down in the description below. But these are basically the same thing, okay? Just labeled differently for marketing purposes or whatever. If you go on MA Performance, this runs you about $200 per jug. You keep in mind you need two of these, so $400. Whereas one liter of these, these are about $22. So I ended up buying eight. I bought eight, I'm not gonna use all eight, but just in case I need it for an emergency use or anything like that. So eight bottles of that came out to $182 versus $400 for two of these jugs. So go ahead and save yourself some money. This is safe to use. I'd recommend going uh, Transmax Dual if you guys are on a budget. But if you want the comfort and safety of mine, you can always use the Diaqueen. And last but not least, oil filter. You're gonna wanna have a brand new oil filter. I got mine off of a member in Rally Revolution. His name's Sean Moran, so shout out to you. Thank you for the heads up. 50 bucks, all right, 50 bucks. I got a brand new filter. These easily run you north of $100, so that's just some more savings right there. And then of course the SAE90, the two bottles that you're gonna need, they're gonna run you about $12, $13 per bottle, and that's all you're gonna need for our rear diff and transfer case. And that you can find on our MA Performance. But highly, highly recommend you guys keep on top of it because that's the number one contributor to failing SSTs is people don't change out their transmission fluid. But yeah, if you guys really wanna save some money, continue watching this video. I'll go ahead and show you guys the tools that we're gonna be needing for today, and uh, we'll get this project started. All right, tools for your transfer case, okay? You're gonna need a 17, 17 millimeter wrench. Okay, that's for your fill plug. You're gonna need a 24 millimeter. You can either use a wrench, which is what I'm gonna be using, or you can use a 24 millimeter socket if you got the room. Okay, so that is for your transfer case. All right, and now for your rear diff, you're gonna need that 24 millimeter wrench once again. You will need the wrench because of, because of space issues. You're also going to need you're also going to need a 10 millimeter hex. This is for your drain plug. 
the 24 millimeter is for your fill. So for the transfer case and the rear diff, you guys are also gonna need a little fluid pump. So this is gonna go right into our gear oil, and this is gonna allow you to pump it straight up into your fill holes. Last but not least, but for your SST, you're gonna need a 32 millimeter socket. This is for the bottom of your oil filter. And you're also gonna need an eight millimeter hex. This is for the drain and fill plugs to your SST. So that's all you're gonna need there. I also did go to Lowe's and picked up this little bucket. This is going to help me measure out how many liters are actually coming out or quarts are actually coming out of everything I am draining today. And like most of my videos, I buy a lot of stuff off of Amazon. That way it gets shipped straight to the door. This was shipped within two days, which is pretty quick. So we'll see how this works. And if it works pretty well, um, yeah, you'll be able to find this down in the description below. All right, now that the car is jacked, that is out of the way. As you can see, the car is pretty much leveled. I have it all up on four jack stands, all nice and safe. Now, we'll go ahead and take out the under tray. All right, real quick, I want to point out your intervals for this little project. So SST, Mitsubishi requires you guys to do it every 30,000 miles, but if you put more wear and tear or you beat up on your car, you might want to do it a little bit earlier. So I'm about 25,000 miles deep on this fluid change. And then the same thing with your rear diff and your transfer oil, Mitsubishi suggests every 30,000 miles. So again, I'm sitting about 25,000 miles for that as well, which is fine and dandy. I'd rather get it done sooner than later. So just opened up the filter. So there's the filter itself and it actually came with the housing. I didn't actually see that through the bubble wrap. So that's pretty cool. If you guys damage the old one, you definitely get a new one right there. So here's our filter. All right, we're gonna go ahead and knock out that rear diff first. All right, as we slide under the car, let me go ahead and just tell you guys the first difference that I noticed about our rear diff. So here's our rear differential right here is gonna be your fill plug, again, that's gonna be your 24 millimeter wrench or socket, but you're definitely not gonna be able to really fit a socket there, so I mainly say 24 millimeter wrench. And right down here is gonna be your 10 millimeter drain plug, okay? So the difference is, in the Evos, this is towards the front of it because they have a yaw controller back here. So the Rattler does not have it, it's just a simple little box, plain and simple right in front of your site. So keep that in mind. And then the tooling is a little bit different as well. I believe on the Evos, the rear diff is a 17 millimeter, not a 24. And then I think this is a six or an eight millimeter hex when ours is a 10. But with our drain bucket down here, I wanna see how much we actually retrieve out of here. So here is our 24 millimeter wrench. Fits nice and snug on there. We're gonna break the fill line before we do the drain line. That way it gets airflow through there, doesn't burble up, and we get all the fluid out nice and easy. Interesting, we got some pouring out, so I don't know if they overfilled it or what. So pretty interesting observation. Looks like I only got a half a liter out. And the car is leveled, so not really too sure how I feel about that, but we're gonna go ahead and fill this thing up appropriately. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead, let this continue dripping for a little bit. We're gonna, re we're gonna reinstall the drain plug, come up here to the fill line, and we're gonna use our pump. We're gonna keep filling, filling, filling until it flows out, and that's how you know it's full. So I do want to take the time to show you this. Here is your fill plug. Okay, there is a gasket it's on the car side. So you throw that on here before you throw it back on the car. And here is our drain plug. Okay, and there's some goo on there. So this is magnetic, catches any shavings that could possibly be in there. Doesn't look too bad. So we're gonna go ahead and clean this off real quick. Just get all that gunk off there. Clean her up pretty good and get her back on the car. Check your threads. You don't want to ruin anything. Everything looks kosher here. And reinstall your drain plug.
All right, so here's that rear diff out here in the sunlight. It looks pretty dark. You can see some deposits in there. But yeah, that's definitely weird how much didn't come out like I thought it was going to. I will say, this stuff freaking stanks. Well, now that the drain is done, let's go ahead and do the fill. Handy dandy little pump. I'm just gonna screw on just like so. And there we go. But here's the fresh oil. There's the color you can expect. All right, all we're gonna do is take this end of our pump, stick it on through the hole, and you're just gonna go ahead and pump the fluid until it comes out. So right here as you're filling, you can kind of see how much more you have left to go. We're about halfway through the bottle. So we should be getting pretty close to being filled. But that's just a nice little gauge to see how much fluid you have. All right, there we go. Starting to overfill out, and I think we have a full rear diff. All right, there you have it. That's how you go ahead and drain and refill your rear diff on a rally art. But now that rear diff is done, let's go ahead and knock out that transfer case. So in order to get easier access, you are going to have to remove the under tray, like I said, in the tools required portion of this video. Of this video. So once you have the under tray removed, we'll go ahead and get underneath the car. All right, first things first, let's help you locate the transfer case. All right, so with the under tray removed, here is your oil pan. Here's your drain plug. So just behind all of that is your transfer case right here. That is going to be your fill plug. So that's going to be either your 17 millimeter socket or 17 millimeter wrench, whatever you guys prefer to use. I'm going to go ahead and give it a shot with the wrench that I have. Or if that doesn't work, we'll go ahead and use the socket. And this guy right here towards the bottom, that is your 24 millimeter and that is going to be your drain plug. So like the rear diff, we're going to go ahead and pop off the fill plug, get some air passing through there, and then we'll go ahead and drain this. And once again, log how much comes out. So just to update you guys, the wrench will work, but I think this can be a lot easier. I have the tools already. So here's, so here's the 17 millimeter socket. Just have it on a little breaker bar. Oh boy, that was tight. So speaking of torquing and everything like that, I'm going to leave down below a little web page where you can find all the torques for everything that I've been doing today. And I'm not going to pull it out all the way just in case more fluid comes out like the rear diff did. So like I suspected, some's coming out from there. Let's go ahead and get the drain plug done. So right off the bat you can see it's almost at the 75 which is way more than what the rear diff had and that's with a lot of it spilling right here so I think their transfer case was done pretty well the rear diff, I don't know what's going on with that here is our transfer case there's a lot of stuff going on on this one that don't look too good but we are getting it out of there that looks crazy looking, I never kind of do, I never do these oil changes like this so I don't know what to expect when I do them but here's what it looks like and that's a good thing we're changing it out on man that just looks disgusting i really hope it's not as bad as it looks it comes off really nice it's like one of those satisfying cleaning tutorials all right fill plug and gasket all cleaned up let's go ahead and refill our transfer case all right, so real quick, the transfer case is a little bit different than the rear differential, and that's because the rear diff, you basically pump it up until it starts oozing out. Well, the transfer case, we're gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna have to do this a couple times because you can get a false reading that it is full, and at the end of the day, you're underfilling your transfer case. So that's why it was kind of important for me to know how much oil was actually in there, and we got about 
about 75% of one liter, okay? So that's what we can expect to put back in. So it's important that the car is one, level, that way you have a good reading. Two, that you do it more than one time because there's air, air pockets and stuff like that where it can give you a false sense of it being filled up. And lastly, uh, yeah, so just expect to fill as much as you guys took out. So to make sure we're being accurate, we're gonna go ahead and open up a new one and pour in 75%. All right, so we just got our first indication of an overfill. Started spewing out the top of the fill hole. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna wait about five, 10 minutes, let it settle. Everything's gonna come down naturally. Go back up there, start pumping again, wait till it overfills. And we're gonna repeat that process three times. Give it about five to 10 minutes each, each portion, let it settle down. And uh, once you're done with your third rotation, you should be good to go ahead, tighten everything back up, and you'll be done with the transfer case. But this video did start off super hot in a super hot garage, <laughs> but it's Florida and the rain was naturally bound to happen. So getting a nice little thunder and lightning show, nice dip in temperatures, but um, yeah, not too, not a bad way to kind of wait your time while I'm at it. Make sure you guys, if you're going to do all these oil changes, you have a plethora of rags to use that are handy to wipe things down as you go. And you also want some oil mats, unless you want some stains in your garage or wherever you guys are working. And um, this job would have been way easier if I had a lift. If only I had a lift. While we're waiting for the oil to settle, here is tea case, brown as can be. Way different than that lime green color that we're putting in. Let's see if anything comes out of here. Nothing terribly bad. Hear that thunder show? All right, so after about waiting about seven minutes after the last overfill, went back down, went back down underneath the car, got about 20 more pumps in, and then it started overfilling again. So like I said, it can't give you false indication. So we're gonna go ahead and do that one or two more times. We'll see what happens after this next round, and then we'll go from there. But while we're waiting for that, we can go ahead and start our transmission oil. So for the SST portion, what you want to go ahead and do is with the under tray removed, come up towards the top, and you're going to have to remove the battery to get access to the SST fill hole. All right, once you have your battery removed, I discovered this as well. You have to move up this tray, just kind of push out of the way. But the fill plug for the SST is actually right here. So what we're going to have to do to get access to that is remove this little bracket for the battery terminal. And these are two 10 millimeters. Once that's out of the way, you'll have access to your drain plug or your fill plug. All right, third check. We got eight pumps out of that one. So I think, that, I think we'll wait 10 more minutes, do one last one, see how many pumps it takes. If it's less than three or four, I think we'll be good. In the meantime, let's check out our eight millimeter hex. Just make sure it fits properly, which it does. Perfect. So fill hole is confirmed good. Let's go ahead and check the drain hole. All right, for reference, I have the splash guard removed. Here is your SST oil filter. Okay, there's your transmission. Now, let's find those drain plugs. So for my car, I have two. I've seen variations of two fill plug or two drain plugs, three drain plugs. Mine, in this case, has two and eight millimeter fits there and let's check the other one eight millimeter sweet so here are my two drain plugs and the eight millimeter works confirmed so while we're down here let's go ahead and confirm the 32 millimeter filter perfect so 32 millimeter works with the filter All right, two pumps. I think we are officially full. Fill plug back in, drain plug back in, everything wiped down, looking nice and neat. So yeah, transfer case is done. And just for reference, rear diff, transfer case, draining, getting all the cooling, nice to run out the SST and stuff like that. 
that was all within an hour and a half so that's with me YouTubing so I have to stop get the camera ready and things like that so hour and a half you can do the rear diff transfer case and pretty much halfway through the SST all we gotta do is pretty much drain it and fill it now man I don't know who at Kamacho Mitsubishi hired the Hulk but this drain this fill plug was definitely on there pretty good man All right, since we're just doing a drain and fill, I'm thinking about six to seven liters are gonna come out. So I plan on doing one drain plug at a time. So let's go ahead and do the one furthest toward the front of the car. And then we'll go ahead and drain the other one. See how much is holding in which, which drain port. What a mess. All right, drain plug number one results in just under two liters let's go ahead and see what drain plug number two offers us and real quick here is our drain plug that just came out looks pretty clean so we'll go ahead and clean that surface and put this back on all right there you have it we just drained our SST we're using the two drain ports and as you can see right there, we're like a very smidge above six liters drained. And we haven't really done the filter yet or the line. So that's what we're getting ready to do here next. Let me go ahead and clean that up, get the drain port back on there, and we'll get the filter off. All right, here is our SST fluid. I thought it would have been darker than that. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead. Just figured I'd show you guys that before we do the filter. Now I don't want to drain anything until I get all of the oil out that I'm going to be getting out. That way I know how much to put back in there. So just a couple things to take note of with this SST filter. So first things first is again, this is their 32 millimeter, right? But before you do that, there's going to be a little latch up here to the right hand side right here that you're going to want a flathead to kind of pick up before you start spinning it. Let me go ahead and show you guys what I'm talking about. There's that little latch that I'm talking about. So you just want to get a little little flathead or something to kind of bend the tab up before you start spinning it. But be careful because this is pretty fragile. Alright, now that that filter is removed, let's go ahead and take it to the sunlight and show you guys what we can find out. All right, so here is the filter that just came out of the car. Let's see what it looks like. Honestly, this looks like a very, very healthy SST from what I know. I don't really see anything crazy in here. I'll have to like cut this open on another day so you guys can see what's in there. But uh, nothing, nothing really scary to see. I was expecting to see some kind of shavings or something, but uh, looks very healthy. So. I'm actually really happy about that. I've been taking care of the car. And just so you guys know, this filter can only go in one way. As you can tell, it does not fit. Flip it around with the nipple side up. Drops right in, so you can't really install the filter wrong. Pretty smart design. So, all we have left to drain are those two lines right there. Basic needle nose pliers, you can remove that clamp and we'll drain whatever's in those hoses and see what our total fill line is all right well i tried you guys can see i was able to move that hose a little bit but i really don't want to rip or break that right now so we're not going to really do that portion today which is okay we still got the vast majority of the oil out it would have been nice to drain those hoses but it's not the end of the world if you can do it do it if you don't if you can't don't really sweat it Let's go ahead and throw on our new filter. This is what it looks like. One more time. Pretty nice, right? There you go. You can kind of see the extra filter in there with the lighting hitting it. So here's the new one. Again, thanks, Sean. This is a Filtran oil. This is a Filtran filter made in Germany. Here's the one that came off the car. Same thing filter in Germany so you're getting the real deal 
with Sean. Nothing to be scared of. So with all the fluid drain that we can, here we are, we're just above six liters. About six and a quarter actually, we'll call it. It's almost at the halfway point, so. And yeah, we'll call it six and a quarter. Here's the new filter. Before I put this on, you guys will see right here, it does have a new O-ring on there. Now, if you guys buy this from another party, I'm not sure if it's gonna come with it or not. Just make sure you guys have an O-ring on there. If it doesn't have one, you can always just use the one that was on the filter before. Just transfer it over. So like anything, we're just gonna go ahead Dab some oil on here real quick. Give it a nice little seal. So with the filter tightened back down, drain plugs tightened back down, little lines and hoses tightened back down, we're gonna go ahead and fill up our SST. And we're gonna go ahead and put about a quarter over six liters in. But since we're all filled up, we can go ahead and reinstall that fill plug, tighten that down, get the battery back in the car, clean up and call it a video. So since, that, so since that's all tightened down, before I go any farther, let's make sure we have nothing leaking under the car. Which I believe that is the case. I don't see any leaks. And don't feel anything, any leaks. I think, I think we are okay. All right, battery back in, snorkel back on. Looks like a full engine bay once again. Let's go ahead and start the car, make sure everything is working the way it should be. I'm just gonna let this run for a little bit, get the juices pumping, then we'll go make sure nothing's leaking. Rear diff looks okay. SST looks okay. Transfer case looks okay. All right, I'm feeling really good. I got all the fluids changed that I wanted to. I'm pretty sure the rally is gonna feel a lot better now. Um, it was a good sign seeing the SST fluid. I didn't see any big metal chunks or anything in there, so I'm pretty sure I have a healthy SST, which is the most important thing on this car. But yeah, I figured I'd make a video for you guys on how to do the rally art and rear diff, transfer case, and SST. Got it all done in about two and a half hours. Um, that's trying to figure out all the tooling, set up the camera, water breaks here and there, and everything like that. It is pretty hot out here, but um, yeah, really beneficial. If you guys have the time, the tools, the area to do it i highly suggest that you guys do it yourself save them extra money put it back in your pocket put it back towards your car do whatever you want with it buy a lottery ticket make some mega bucks <laughs> but um yeah be more in tune with your car don't trust every dealership out there some people i've heard horror stories about the sst putting in putting in the wrong fluids and things of that nature so do it yourself if you can bring it to the shop if you feel trustworthy but um, yeah, so if you guys have any recommendations on what I, what I could do differently, um, please lay a comment down below, share that knowledge with me and everybody else who watches this video. And like always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns regarding today's fluid changes, let me know and I'll try to address them for you. So other than that, I just wanna say thanks for watching, never live your life and I don't, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Unless you guys wanna come help me clean all this mess. <laughs> but I figured you didn't want to, so um, yeah, see you in the next one. Peace. Forgot to mention, when you guys do an SST change, it's probably very beneficial to go ahead and do a reteaching. So be on the lookout for that. Something on my list. Just out of curiosity, let's see what color this SST fluid is. Again, this is the Dye Queen, the stuff that Mitsubishi wants you to use. Oh, that's exactly the same at least color wise.